Put him down. Put him down. I'm not looking up. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Agony of Positivity podcast. I am Ross, talking monotone, joined by Sabal, who is also monosabolic in his name. How's the week been? Uh, how has my week been? It's been all right. Well, that... <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing, uh, the, the just all right was a bit of a letdown. Oh, uh, yeah, nothing too exciting. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I feel like it's been a hectic week, but it really, ha- like, it has, but it hasn't. Like, there's not much going on. Sure. So, uh, let's see here. There is, uh, like, I don't even know if there's anything in the news to talk about. Like, I'm so out of uh, the loop on everything it feels like. Yeah. Like, let's see here. Like, was there any news that mattered this week? Uh, I'm sure Israel and Palestine did the are doing I'm something. Sure, I'm sure Joe Biden is still an idiot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> the, uh, I do like that. Uh, even the de- like from things I catch, like uh, the Democratic Party. Is it odds with him yeah. over stuff? So it's sure. like he's, I don't know. Like he's just like in some like no man's land where just nobody yeah. really likes him. Or maybe he just doesn't really stand for anything and just kind of goes with the flow. It's like, well, you're not, um, you're not progressing our stuff and you're not progressing their stuff. So what are you doing here? So, I mean, not, and not to get too political here. I have never liked Joe Biden ever. <laughs> Even right. when uh, what when Obama picked him, yeah, I, I think Obama yeah. picked him as his vice president because the, the dude's a cardboard cutout. He, <laughs> he, he's cardboard. He, he's he's plain. He's he's boring. You just yeah, kind of yeah. point him in a direction. Yeah, I just he's an idiot. I, I, I've never liked him. So. <laughs> you feel like uh, feel about him about like I do uh, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll leave that there. Um, let's see. So I guess we can just jump into, like, topics this week. Sure. All right. Uh, do you want to talk about wrestling, video games, TV, shoes? We can talk about TV a little bit. All right. Let me hit the thing. Something that could never, ever possibly destroy us. Mr. Stay Puft. He chose poorly. have chosen wise. All right. What do you got? We talk about, uh, I don't have a lot, but I was, whatever reason, oh, it was because of Dynamite. Uh, I turned over TNT and uh, the last night was on Transformers movie. Yeah. That is terrible. <laughs> that, that is, even, even for Transformers standards, uh, it's just, that's a bad movie, man. <laughs> the, so as a guy with like Autobot and Decepticon tattoos back from, yeah. you know, 1998, before the idea of these movies existed, um, yeah. there has been some really good stuff in the Michael Bay Transformers movies. Like as far as, yeah. oh, that was cool to see. This was cool to see. I kind of like that. I'm pretty sure if I made a list, though, the, oh, I really wish they didn't do that side of the <laughs> list would be way bigger. <laughs> I, yeah, it was it was just bad. I'm like, man, it was, this is not good. Because this is, uh, last night, that's the one where it starts out with Prime. He's, like, in the movie theater. What? Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, like... Yeah. They, like, kind of fast-forwarded some where they're hunting Autobots and everything and all that. Uh, Because that was cool because you got to see him as, like, a flat-nosed truck. 
Yeah. Um, but I mean, you get to see it in Bumblebee, which it looks way cooler because it's what you're expecting. Um, but yeah, like Mega that was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, what they do to Megatron, he becomes Ultron or whatever, whatever. Galvatron. Um, oh yeah, I mean it was goofy. <laughs> yeah, there's just everything they did. <laughs> It's like WWE. It could have been better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like they did all kinds of stuff that could have been better. And it's just really disappointing. Um, yep. The clockwork guy, like the little butler robot or whatever. Yep. He was cool. Yep. Sure. I'm looking through images now because I've repressed a lot of the uh, memories from it. Yeah, but yeah said, like, uh... just there's just so much they did wrong I, I guess they want to do a reboot of Transformers and G.I. Joe are we going to get rid of Michael like Bay well yeah I think Michael Bay is done I think getting a new uh, director and uh, they want to do a shared universe G.I. Joe and Transformers because that's how it was in the cartoon and, there uh, hmm there is a uh comic series that's like G.I. Joe and Transformers yeah. and it's pretty good yeah uh, it starts out where like they basically found the Autobot like Cobra found the Autobots and they've been controlling them uh, yeah they basically use them as like the Cobra Hiss tanks or whatever yeah but there's the red the red Hiss uh, which is Optimus is constantly giving them problems like it's it's yeah. erase their entire like mainframe database multiple times and they just can't seem yeah. to control it. Um, and then eventually, yeah. you know, they kind of break free and all that stuff. Um, sure. Let's see. Transformers reach franchise gets a revamp with two movies in the works. Is there? Yeah. So, and Hasbro trying to move separate pen by Joby Harold, I don't know who. Oh no, he co-wrote the upcoming Zack Snyder zombie movie. Let's let's not have uh, anyone associated with Zack Snyder. I don't know. I don't he, need grim wants, and brooding Optimus Prime. We want Optimus Prime to be emo. <laughs> Optimus Prime's parents were killed when he was Ryan Pax. Yeah. And he vowed revenge against the Decepticons who killed him. Like, well, that's not how the story... It is now. He was raised on a farm. <laughs> yes. By... Yes. Jeez, I beat. By Energon farmers. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. So, I don't know. Maybe it'd be good. Maybe it won't be. I just don't... Uh, you know... You know what's been good is sometimes they'll do the animated stuff for it and it's not awful. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe they just need to do that. Or at this point, let's just let's just stop. Like Superman, no more. Transformers, yeah. no more. Stick to Honestly, like the Transformers video games have better story than a lot of the uh the other stuff that they've done. Yes. I agree with that. Give me one real good CGI version of the original Transformers cartoon movie. Same voice act, like take the audio track and build it around the audio track so it's the same movie, but with just sweet graphics. Sure. And stop. No more. A moratorium on that yep. until Peter Cullen dies, and then no more Optimus Prime. Yep. There we go. <laughs> Problem solved. Yep. The, uh, so that's that's the only thing I had in movie section. So. so as a result of Dynamite, how many movies have you watched that you would never have watched, or have you seen the ending too that you would have never watched? Oh, at least two or three. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I feel like the Meg is on with Jason oh, Statham. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the ending that's to that movie more times than I care. Um, that's a terrible. <laughs> Jack Reacher or whatever. Seen the yeah, ending that's, to that's that a one. Better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's just been a few where I'm like, well, I guess I'm watching the last 10 minutes of this. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, 
That's TNT's plan. They're like, let's watch our crappy movies that we've spent a fortune to play over and over and over and over again. Yeah, like, it, you, I don't know. When I was younger, it was a big event to for certain movies to be on TV. Like yeah. They'd advertise it all week that it'd be on Friday. And then it was like, oh, this is a big deal. You don't hardly ever get like a good movie on TV. And now it's just, hey, here's this movie that's kind of good. We're going to spam it. Well, uh, I remember watching an interview with Kevin Nash, and Kevin Nash said he talked to one of the one of the VPs of uh, TNT at the time. Yeah, and they said some of the movies that they'll get, they're happy to get a, like a point two, or I, I mean, I don't know what the rating system works, but I think he said it was like a point two or something like that. Yeah, and Kevin Nash was like, "Yeah, but you're taking Thunder and Nitro." off at night and we make a whatever point five or what whatever the number was. It's a higher number than what the movie would have made. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but uh the the movie we can plug over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> it's like, well that doesn't make sense. He's like the wrestler's making you more money. <laughs> They're getting you more right. viewership. So he's he said he never really understood why the whole uh uh how T and T and the ratings and, and all that works. So who knows? Well, yeah. Well, and I think at that time, too, that was when um, they were looking to get wrestling off the network. Sure, yeah. Even though it was better than pretty much anything else they were running, for some reason they were like, no, we don't want wrestling on our platform. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So, well, do you want to go to uh, some Dynamite wrestling stuff? Yeah, because there's a lot of news when it comes. Because speaking of TNT, they uh, yeah, the TBS deal. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, here we go. All right, so yeah, so speaking of the whole TNT thing, I guess uh, Dynamite got a or not Dynamite, AEW got a deal with uh, TBS. Yep. Well, because Which... I guess Turner, however that works, uh, I guess they have HL in HL now. Yeah. I think that's going to yeah. I think that's going to interfere with uh, wrestling. Yeah, it seems like uh, I remember hearing they got the NHL and it was going to do something with it. So I guess this is the solution. Uh, and then I assume that because they technically be in breach of AEW's contract probably no by changing it they probably just gave them a better deal um sure but like you were just saying like some of these movies can't be pulling anything close to what dynamite pulls yeah i mean i can't imagine they do but who knows maybe they do like i can't imagine there's a million people who tune in to watch the meg on a regular basis <laughs> well and I think TBS has a little bit bigger market than TNT. So, yeah, I've read that. Um, I guess now this is people just talking about it, so I don't actually know this. I guess TNT yeah. is slightly more prestigious to be on, but TBS has a bigger reach. Sure, I'm pretty sure for AEW, like. I just can't imagine there's an audience that's tuning in to AEW because it's on TNT. And they're like, well, they're not on TNT. I'm not going to watch them. Like, like, I don't think yes. wrestling fans work that way. Like, if Raw were to move to the UPN network again, and people can, if yeah. people have access to it, they're going to watch it. Um, yeah. So I don't think the move will hurt them, but it sounds like it might actually be a bigger reach. <laughs> So that'll be good. I assume they get some extra money out of it. Um, they're going to do four super card specials. Yeah. Um, on TNT. So I'm assuming that'll be like your Clash of the Champions uh, kind of deal. Yeah. Like, I'm wondering if that'll be because they already do like the Beach Bash or whatever they want to call it or Blood and Guts. Mm -hmm. They have like the kind of like every so often they'll have a special dynamite. I wonder yeah. if this will be treated like an even bigger deal, like a pay-per-view. I don't know. Because, I mean, that works out good, though, because if you have your four pay-per-views that you actually expect people to pay money for, but then yeah. you have four other, like, 
big cards that you can build up big angles to. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I saw someone arguing that they think AEW should have more pay-per-views. I was like, no. What? The yeah, constant no. criticism of WWE forever has been they have too many. And now yeah. you're wanting a place to have more. Stick with four. One a quarter's fine. Yeah. Every time they do them, they're like 47 hours long. I don't want eight, eight actual pay-per-views in a year. Speaking of which... Did you, because I sent you a thing, and I didn't know WWE was doing this, the whole zombie thing? Oh, yeah. That was awesome. So, funny story on that. Um, I kind of told you, like, in the text what had happened. But, so, I didn't even realize, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I knew the Backlash pay-per-view was on that Sunday or not, but I saw something for it. I mean, like, obviously, I'm, like, looking at, wrestling stuff so i'm gonna figure out that it's on at some point during the day um (laughs) so we still have peacock network for a little bit um yeah like i think it actually expired on monday so yeah well i'm gonna turn this thing on but i really wasn't into it um so i I fell asleep like kind of in the beginning i missed I knew there was some kind of tie-in with a Batista movie. Like, I saw he had tweeted about something, that he couldn't be there, but whatever. I didn't really know what was going on. So I fall asleep. Yeah. I wake up. And like, you know how, like, if you fall asleep and you do, like, that power nap thing? Sometimes yeah. you wake up good, and sometimes you wake up, you're not sure if you're still on Earth kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. I had yeah, one of those super foggy wake-ups. I, 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 I call it sleep days. <laughs> yeah. And so I come up from that, and I kind of look at the TV... And I see Miz in the ring. I see zombies around the ring. Yeah. I hear the commentators, like, being all weirdos. Yeah. And I was just like, what is going on? And I guess I was watching, like, kind of the finish of the match or something. Because then I see Miz attacked by zombies. And yeah. then I kind of fell back asleep um, after that. Yeah. And I was like, what, did I dream? that or was that real it turns out that it was real so as a storyline how does that how does that work um uh, so i went back Undertaker, <laughs> so the so Undertaker is the only character that can kind of pull this off <laughs> yes. uh i didn't know wwe had any other characters like that. i guess the fiend maybe but no. no i think it is as simple as they just did a movie tie-in, and we're just like, "Oh, uh, we're just gonna send some zombies down as lumberjack." <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. and, like it's insane because I missed, like, I don't know if the time I turned it on initially, like, I missed any of like the pre, the pre-match <laughs> stuff, like you know, like where they do like the pre-show. Yeah. That talked about this zombie lumberjack match, like. <laughs> It was yeah. like this perfect storm of me like either going into the kitchen and missing something or talking to my wife and missing something. Yeah. So I didn't know what was going on. And then it's just like, this is ridiculous. And then apparently now it is, I'm not going to say it's not completely ridiculous. And the fact that I don't consider the Miz or priest or any of those guys to have anything to do with zombies. Like it doesn't, doesn't really work for them. Uh, character wise. Yeah, see, because I don't know any of the characters. I was like, well, maybe one of them controls. Yeah, yeah Miz is actually a voodoo master now, and uh, <laughs> the spell backfired, though. Yeah. Now, I guess Miz got hurt in that match, um, which is sad because I don't think he's ever actually been like legitimately injured. Yeah. Uh, there was like a crazy jump kick or something that Priest did off the ropes that went low, and oh, okay. supposedly messed up Miz's knee. Gotcha. Uh, fortunately, he was devoured alive by zombies, so that's not going to be a problem for him. Um, <laughs> hopefully, there's enough left that he can reanimate and we'll get Zombie Miz for a run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can only hope that he comes back as a zombie. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, <laughs> what in deep world is going on? What is, what is going on with WWE right now? <laughs> It's very weird because the difference between Raw and SmackDown right now, like the little bits yeah. that I watch here and there, wow. 
it is two totally different worlds um where oh. it's like feels like smackdown's pretty good and i just i don't understand raw is uh is kevin sullivan in charge of <laughs> kevin sullivan it- and vampiro because uh, the whole zombie thing, the whole zombie thing, very much seemed like a Kevin Sullivan Dungeon of Doom type thing. What you don't know is one of those zombies was the Yeti. Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know. So I just thought that was weird. <laughs> uh, no, it's definitely uh, anything I read. Like the amount of people who hated it seemed pretty high. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if they would just had zombies around ringside and then been done with it but then yeah. eating Miz at the end or whatever happened to him <laughs> is like alright uh, <laughs> yeah I, I don't know I'm like I, I understand wrestling's fake and I get that but there has to be some I, I, I don't know this is there's a fine line of my wrestling where I'm just like, this is dumb. What, what is this? The so as a wrestling fan, I am okay with many many things. Undertaker and Kane, the Fiend being like supernatural beings. Um, sometimes Big it's wearing hard. black leather, riding a coffin. Yeah, <laughs> like there's things like that where it's like you've you've created a scenario where this makes sense. And yeah. I'll accept it because I want to be entertained. And then sure. there's like certain yeah. things where I just kind of like, no, I'm not buying. Like I don't like this one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the zombie thing because it just unless there's something I'm missing, like because even the people defending it didn't really have like a a good defense other than oh well they just did a thing with a movie. All right, well there's got to be a way like. Give me a vignette like, of Papa Shango somewhere doing something. It's like, well, it, it's funny because, like, yes, we we understand there, there there are no zombies in real life. We we got that fact, but how does it work in a storyline? How does these zombies just pop up out of nowhere? Is it controlling them? Is uh, you know right? Well, and it was from from the little bit that I could tell is like they treated it like it was real. Um, sure. Or so. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know like I've I'm I'm missing so many of the little things to it because I just don't know what was going on but yeah the whole it's yeah. hilarious but not necessarily in a good way well and then there's rumors that they were criticizing AEW's blood and guts and I'm like really <laughs> uh, Chris Jericho took a, a fall like a stunt fall Zombies yeah. ate the Miz. No. I'll take the stunt fall. <laughs> but then AEW can't really uh, complain too much because they have that one uh, female wrestler that Abaddon? Is, uh, yeah, which is terrible too. So I, I don't know. Yeah, but the I think they re- kind of portray like I don't think they a hundred percent treat her like she is a dead person who's come back to life. Yeah. Like it's, I don't know. I think hers is more like part weirdo mind games yeah kind of like orange cassidy is mind games like she's the other end of it um but when it comes to characters like that it's like i i, I can only go with undertaker right <laughs> well, yeah, anything I that did. does it you immediately think undertaker yeah um yeah like the closest that existed for a moment like bray wyatt when he fought the undertaker you could have had like a transfer of power thing there, and I think it would have worked out okay because he was like the weirdo cult leader dude. Yeah. But uh, well, yeah they they decided that Bray Wyatt needed to lose like thirteen pay per views in a row or something. I forget what the number is. Yes. Yes. How many views did Bray Wyatt lose in a row? I'm typing. That's why I'm talking like that. Yeah. <laughs> July. I can't find it. Well, Bray Wyatt. And Bray Wyatt's another character that I, I was like, I don't understand uh, his character and Alyssa, uh, Alyssa Bliss there. So I, I, I don't know. 
yeah, her character, like, it's been super weird. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I mean, it ga- it's given her something to do, and she's done it as well as can be. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, it's weird when people get into situations where they're a character, they're a wrestling character that does no wrestling. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Like, I don't know when the last time she had a legitimate match was. That's what I'm saying. Is she hurt and she can't wrestle? So they're like, hey, we'll just put you in here in this weird fiend storyline here. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, I have no idea. I mean, she beat Randy Orton, so. <laughs> sure. I mean, that's. <laughs> if I could have a wrestling career and claim that I defeated Randy Orton, then I'd be pretty happy. Sure. So, let alone, like, an uh, intergender match, which is super rare for WWE. So on Tuesday. Uh, I was uh, I was at my parents' house and I was I really had nothing to watch because yeah. I was waiting for my wife to pick me up uh, from her school function or whatever. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna watch NXT. <laughs> and I tried to watch NXT. I, I kid you not. And I'm not bashing NXT or anything. Well, I guess I am, but uh, I tried to watch that like six times. Yeah, and I, I I just couldn't get into it, man. I couldn't do it. I just like turning it off. I'm like this is boring. Um, I haven't tried to watch it in a while. So I did I, like that the million dollar man is back. I thought that was neat. <laughs> yeah, you you caught that. He ties in. There's a character who got like a lot of money, so yeah. the million dollar man shows up. Um, yes. In a perfect world, we'd also get big money Matt to show up, but yes. I don't think that'll happen anytime in the immediate future. Yeah. So, do you want to talk a little bit about Dynamite real quick? Sure, go ahead. All right. I did not get to see very much of Dynamite. Um, <laughs> okay. So, I'm glad we're going to talk about it. <laughs> yes. Well, I thought that there... Did you see it? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. Okay. So, I was trying to... I was having some technical difficulties, and I had to try to find like a stream of it. Um, outside of the normal means and every stream I saw would get taken down to where I just okay, gave okay. up. Um, yeah. So I got to see like K, uh, Christian and Sidel. Um, the big thing for that one is like he got the kill switch on pretty smoothly again. Yep. So I really need to go back and watch his TNA stuff to see if he had gotten better at the kill switch like during that time. Because I absolutely hated that move, but he's actually hit it pretty good. Yeah. Or it's a new world of wrestling where people actually know how to, like, take that move and not make it look like garbage. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's that. Maybe people know how to make the move look good. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's uh, when Moxley would, would use the headlock driver. If it was Kofi Kingston, it looked awesome. Most other people, it looked just well, crap. it's like uh, the Razor's Edge and uh, the Jackknife Powerbomb. Some people knew how to take it. Some yeah. people made it look stupid. So, I mean, yeah, I think it all depends on the person you're doing it to. Yeah. Now you have people that are like, oh, all I got to do is just, like, fall on my face. That's way better than some of these other moves that I need to do a flip yes. for. Thank yeah. goodness. Um, yeah. So, like, afterwards, we got, like, a, a bit of a beat down, but Hangman came out and saved the day. Um, sorta until, uh-huh. until it did not go his way. Um, now I saw, so this is when it first started to cut out on me real bad was yeah. the acclaimed and Moxley and Kingston. Yeah. Uh, I assume like, so I saw where I think Bowens walked into the ring and Ambrose just pasted him. Did you just call him Ambrose? <laughs> yes, I did. Because I was thinking of the headlock driver. So I associate the headlock driver with Ambrose, not with the Moxley gotcha. character. Um, gotcha. Yes. <laughs> and honestly, I still think Ambrose was a pretty good name uh, for him. So, but yeah, like he uh, just got, like, it looked like he just, for real, like, Moxley was throwing the punch or whatever. And yep. Bowen's just moved instead of like kind of moving away from it to roll with it. It looked like he moved into it or something for a second and just got blasted. Yeah. And then it basically yeah, they, like uh, stopped. Like my stream cut out for a bit right there. Kingston and Moxley, they're, they're intri- they need a name. Uh, I, I'm, I, I can't. 
But when it comes to big tag teams, I need a name. I can't just say, yeah, we're Moxley and King. No, you, you give me a name. I, I don't care if it's stupid. I, just give, give it up. Right, some name. I'm sure they'll have. They might have something. Um, I mean, they at least seem because, like, they have like the they've established they had a relationship before where they were close friends. Um, so yeah. them all of a sudden being a team with the way everything has gone against the yeah. Bucks at least makes sense. Um, and it makes sense sure. like they would work well together because they they know each other well and they were friends and they've kind of alluded that they they've teamed up in the past. So yeah. Um, so it, I'm I'm much more willing to accept them being able to go against the Bucks in a tag match. Yeah. Than I would if you just like. I don't know if you took uh, <laughs> Dustin <laughs> Dustin Rhodes and Joey Janela and put them in a tag yes. team. Like, uh, no, I'm not buying this for a second. Yes, yes. Uh, they'd have a chance. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so. It looks like they, uh, Mox and Kingston win, no surprise. Uh, yeah. Was there anything that really stuck out in that to you? Or was this like, uh, or I guess, my question, did the acclaimed look at least competent in the match? Yeah, I guess so. Like, uh, I mean, I, I don't I, think I don't anyone know. thought they would win, but them at least not losing in like a minute. I'm not really a fan of the acclaimed, but I mean... Yeah, they they looked all right. So Caster's uh, tights. So I think you had mentioned that uh, your <laughs> wife had said they look like ice cream cones. Yes, yes. I so can't even see it now. When I see it, there was a brief period, I think, where Honky Tonk Man, when he was in Rhythm and Blues, yeah, um, had guitars all over his tights or something. Yeah. So. There is something about the placement of the microphones and stuff on Caster's yes. tights yes. that hugely reminds me of Honky Tonk Man. Yeah. And after the, the ice cream thing, it's like ice cream cones <laughs> like the Honky Tonk Man. Yes, yes. So. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> I just, the, for whatever reason, I just don't like the acclaim. I, I just can't get into them. Um... I need to, like, I think they're good, but they're not really my thing. Although some of his yeah. raps, uh, they do make me laugh. Sure. And the fact that they release them to where you can download them if you want, I think is fantastic. Oh, really? See, I, I, didn't know they, I didn't know they did that. <laughs> yeah, like, you can do, like, SoundCloud. Um, I think he just did, like, he released something on iTunes as well. So, <laughs> yeah, because I think he does, like, some normal stuff, too. But then, like, all the diss tracks you can get as well. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. So there was an interview. Because, because I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan of John Cena. Well, so I'm not a fan of WWE anyway, but I remember John Cena was doing all that. Okay, this, is, this is dumb. Yeah. Um, I mean, Cena was good at it. Um, Caster's pretty good. I don't know how much of his stuff is on the fly or how much is <laughs> planned. But... yeah. Um, cause I know like one of the first couple times he did it on dark is like, uh, I don't know. And now it's like, well, he's actually pretty good. And I think he makes different beats for each song. Um, yeah. so that's fine. Like there, there's more to it than just him, like doing like a crappy rat. Like he actually puts some work into it so I can, sure. I can get behind it. It's not my thing, but, um, yeah. I mean, it'll, he's the standout of that group to me for sure. But they, they do good as a team. So like, I mean, they look like a tag team. They have a name. They have moves that are tag name. Like, you know, they're a tag team. It, it's way better than other things could be. Um, no. So Tony Schiavone, uh, now I've read like results and stuff. So he has another interview that is shockingly uh, interrupted. It's sure. Who sure. thought, um, how, how did this, interview and like staying in Darby beatdown thing go for you? Like, how do you feel you know about what? it? I don't remember watching this, so I don't know if I was, yeah, I, I don't know where I was at. I don't remember this at all. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the thing that I think is, uh, hilarious. So I'm looking at the, the official dynamite results, but it says like yeah. sting locks in the scorpion death lock on Scorpio sky. while Darby Allen whacked away at Ethan page with the skateboard. <laughs> 
<laughs> like just that uh that, that's a that's a sentence that is interesting so i would not have put scorpio sky versus sting because of what you just said up there that that's a lot of s's <laughs> yes. Sting locks a scorpion deathlock in the scorpion sky <laughs> that's ugh. well and then you have like because the deathlock and darby um yeah you could definitely make a tongue twister out of it but so i guess uh so i was listening to scorpio skies podcast uh because kenny omega was on it as a guest but he was talking about it because like i guess they're on the way to the back and then the dark order comes out and he was like what is wrong with the dark order do they just sit in the back watching a tv and they're like "Uh uh-oh the good guys are in trouble we better go stick our nose into it because we need a 20 on two advantage (laughs) <laughs> like, he was he was not very happy uh, with them. I do like how the Dark Order now is basically the enforcers of AEW. Yeah, but though. they're good guy enforcers. It's because there's there's so many of them. They just come out and just like swarm the bad guys. Yeah, it's uh, it is kind of nice to see the shoe on the other foot, so to say. Yeah, because like, how often have you seen like the big heel like NWO style where they just jump the good guys? Now there's a, yeah. a big group that's like the reverse. They're like, oh, you're going to cheat and be dirty? Uh, we're going to stop yes. that. Like, yes. like I don't know. I don't think it'll last forever, but it is interesting. But it, they're still going off Brody Lee's death and everything. So I think it's hard to make them bad guys, you know? Right. I well, mean, right. Dark Order can stay as a, a good guy. Fat. Like, they could honestly do what they do and just have people, like, come and go. Um, have your core yeah. people and then if you ever break it up as long as you have some of those guys still around when uh, Brody Lee Jr. gets old enough you can <laughs> he, he can either bring it back or he can start like just decimating people or it's like oh my god what happened to Evil Uno somebody just murdered him backstage what happened to <laughs> Stu and then when he finally yeah. reveals it's like you all turned your back or whatever and then he's yeah. immediately got something to do you know i would say that's ridiculous thinking but this is AEW, so that's probably exactly what they're thinking like yes six years <laughs> down the road when you want to become like yes. <laughs> and then there'll still be people be like oh they didn't plan that and they're like oh they planned that there's <laughs> how can you see yes. some of the stuff they've done and not give them some credit for plowing through to a long-term uh payoff yes uh yeah so i miss this which i'm fine with i don't need to see mjf or jericho or anyone else for that matter eating food on dynamite it was actually again. so so watched uh i think it was on youtube it was actually pretty good uh for some reason uh what's his face uh spears spears He's really mad if you don't give him his his wine. So uh, I don't know. I, I thought the whole thing. If you if you get a chance, it's like a minute or two minutes long. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. It, it gives Spears some character. Okay. Well, I mean, if they do yeah. that, then that's good because that's what he's been missing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So they're gonna do Stadium Stampede. It looks like I would assume. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like because I've seen a lot with uh FTR tweeting. Where it sounds like they're emphasizing there's not like this is going to be like a serious blood feud fight, not like the yeah. haha funny we got last year. Yeah, which is fine. Sure. Uh, let's see. So Rebel, I assume Rebel got just blown out by Sheeta here. <laughs> sure. Um, did this do like was this just there to advance uh, Baker Sheeta's? match yeah i just that's I, that's all it was to me i thought, I thought. all right let's which see. make me think because baker got uh you know destroyed sheeta yeah. so which makes me think that uh she uh is going to win against baker but who knows maybe not yeah i can't tell i mean it seems like uh I think it's time to, i think i think it's time for the belt to come off of sheeta yeah because i think baker can do more with it but yeah, Man, I don't know. Well, and the crowd is going to cheer for Brit. Like, I just don't think that they can't. Like, she's going to be one right. of those people that might inadvertently be almost face level. 
when she comes out when she's not supposed to be. So you think it's going to be like a Roman Reigns where, yeah, they're bad guys, but they're such good bad guys, you're going to cheer for them? Yeah, at this point. Well, and she's had some, like, really good stuff that there hasn't been, like, a full crowd for. So. Yeah. um, Sure. Yeah, and so, yeah, so I guess this was next. Uh, Inner Circle is going to take the fight or whatever. Um, Jake Hager talked, I guess. I don't know. He seems so out of place when he talks. It's just funny because I uh, on our Instagram page, I I follow his wife, mm-hmm. and him and his wife do funny things like throughout the week. They will like do like fake wrestling skits. Yeah, and uh, it, it's pretty funny. He actually can be funny. He just he just he's awkward right. when he's with the inner. I, I don't know. Like, is he caught in some world where he? doesn't want like he wants to be taken serious in wrestling so he no. doesn't do the funny stuff I, I mean because he's funny him and his wife do the little skits yeah uh they're they're funny uh so i i, I don't know maybe he's like you said he's caught he don't know what he doesn't, doesn't know what he wants to be so i, I don't know well, i could see because there's people that are super it sounds like obviously we don't know them but like you read stuff about them where like some people took themselves very seriously, even though they yeah. were like hilarious people. They didn't want that to be known, or they didn't want to come off that way. They wanted it to be taken serious. So, I mean, maybe he's like in that mindset where, yeah, he's a goofy guy, but he doesn't want people to see him that way. When in reality, well, <laughs> he was. It's, it would so probably be it's better hard. For him. It's hard to make a character like that. I say. Yeah. Uh, because take a character like that. I mean, he almost had to become like a like Heath Ledger, yeah, Heath Ledger Joker. Yeah, maybe. I, I, you know, what I'm saying it's it's hard to get that type of character where you you'll come off come off crazy funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, his sense of humor just may not translate to short promo stuff very well. Like exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Let's see. Uh, did you watch the Serena D versus Red Velvet NWA Women's Championship match? Uh, no, I assume that Red Velvet lost. <laughs> uh, yes, that is the end result. Yes. Um, I haven't seen Serena Deeb in a while, but I still like the NWA Women's Championship better than the AEW Championship. Yeah, I don't yes. know if it's because they put a <laughs> they put a picture of their face on the title, <laughs> like. <laughs> I, it's it's weird. Uh, well, it's like the little cameo necklace picture. Like it's not like like I can see WWE being like, oh, we're gonna do that, but the entire plate is just yes. the person's face. Like I can see them yes. doing it all yeah. wrong. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which I kind of wish it's they would do this. that with the twenty four seven title. Like that would be pretty funny. Yeah, it's it's hard to believe that. Uh, truth it used to be Ron Killings or whatever his name was in TN- TNA. Yeah, and he was yeah. somewhat of a serious character in TNA, and just seeing him now in WWE is just is just terrible. Uh, well, I mean, I guess he's happy doing like there's some interview with him. Like he seems like pretty happy doing what he's doing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, they said this man loves him. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, and he's I like a hundred. <laughs> or something like he's like super old like uh i think someone had said like, and this was like a while ago but i don't know if it was like curtis axel like you know uh henning's son mr perfect son uh yeah they're like dude our truth is so old that he wrestled your dad <laughs> before wwe or something like that yeah like so i forget I mean, who it yeah. was i think it was mr perfect but it might have been somebody else but it was like our truth has been around that long and he still <laughs> looks like he does. Sure. So I mean, if, if Vince loves you and you like being goofy, I mean, I mean, he's probably in the perfect role. So hey, more power to him. Uh, let's see. We got uh, after that. There's like a uh, Anthony Agogo uh, just destroys Austin Gunn. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it looks like. Um, yeah. Can we just say that Anthony Gogo is leader of the the factory? Because uh, pretty much, you, you, you know he's going to turn on QT because I can't see. I don't know. Uh, he has more character. Yes. Than like, 
I mean, ah! <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, everybody. A enormous spider just uh, landed on my arm. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> the, uh, oh my goodness. It died. <laughs> uh, no, I just flicked it off. I, I usually don't kill spiders. Ugh, it's just running around your house? Well, I mean, it's on the carpet now. It went back to wherever it belongs. Oh, God. That would freak me out. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, it freaked me out when all of a sudden it was on my arm. Because I was like, no. what is on my arm? Uh, <laughs> no, now you got a spider running around your house. It's weird. Go, go kill it. <laughs> I don't know where it is now. It blends in with the carpet. Oh, God. That's I weird. mean, it was pretty big. That's but... weird. Well, now if I feel something on me, I'll just know that it's a spider, so it won't be as big of a surprise. Um, you're weird. Uh, it's anyway. like the size of a uh, quarter. Yeah. So that's why yeah, I was like, oh, because it took my brain a second to process what it was. And then I was like, oh, it's just a spider, <laughs> but I still wanted it off me. I don't want to, I don't have radiation, so I'm not getting superpowers out of the deal. Yeah, this is weird to show up in Spider-Man. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, yeah. Like, uh, a go-go is clearly... He's the the linchpin to this whole thing. Um, yeah. But, I mean, they've he's done almost nothing except punch people a couple times. And oh. to me, and I didn't even see half the segments with him, like, it feels like he's a big deal. So, no. I assume that he beats Cody, and then... Maybe he'll beat up uh, QT shortly after that. Yeah. And now, speaking of someone that has no personality, Alec Marvez. Yeah, but he he's... teleported to wherever Christopher Daniels and Frankie were. So, Good. Uh, uh, Alec Marvez, I'm sorry. I just... He just... He um, he's I so like him. I like him doing the backstage interviews where he just shows up places that he shouldn't be. Uh, that's sure. fine. When he's... He... When he was commentary, I was like, oh, God, you guys are going to have to change this. Cause the thing this is, guy. like, I only think he did, like, one and a half shows of commentary. But, man, <laughs> yes. did he get blasted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so Frankie Kazarian is going to hunt down the uh, the elite, which I don't understand because yeah. pretty mo- they they mostly fairly won that match, kind of. Um, so I don't, yeah, I don't understand. Like when you put, when you put the caveat that if you lose again, you're going to break up as a team, um, yeah. it's going to happen eventually. So I don't under, like, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. So if the varsity blondes beat, want to beat them as it was, was going to hunt down every one of the varsity, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Melissa Joan Hart's sister is getting it. Ryan Pillman's getting it. You know, Not Jungle Boy's you know, getting uh, it. That Julia Hart. Girl. Yeah, I think she's literally just turned eighteen because I was looking at her Instagram page. It looks like she just graduated high school or something. It's uh, weird. That's super weird. So she was yeah. training when she was seventeen because she's had a couple of matches. And again, I, I don't. I'm, I'm just going off what I've viewed off her. She may be like twenty five. Who knows? But uh, well, Instagram I mean, page. Melissa Joan gonna... Hart was a big wrestling fan, so she's probably got some connections. <laughs> yes. I don't know, she just seems uh, like she just turned eight there. I don't know. I will say anyway. her being stuck with the varsity blondes. Um, yeah. Largely because of the name and she almost has like the cheerleader thing going. Um, yeah. Well, I think she's a cheerleader at where <laughs> at her elementary <laughs> school that she just graduated from. <laughs> yes. Yes. Her and Brody go to class together. Um, yes. That's, yeah. how they, that's how they met. Yeah, actually, the uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a good fit with the varsity blondes for right now, and gives her something to do. So, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, it'd be funny if Frankie Kazarian was going on a a war path to destroy the varsity blondes. Yes, or any other like jungle or uh, Jurassic Express. Like, I don't know. Um, all right, more Miro action. Yep. <laughs> The- uh, I'm I'm sad because I think I mean I don't know I don't see how you let Murder Hulk be hero I, I just I don't see. yeah immediately um let's see how could we so if we fantasy book that the only thing I could see is Lance Archer beats him 
and it causes so Archer beats him with the plan of Miro getting the belt back shortly after but it causes Miro to go even more insane yeah or Jake the Snake turns on Archer oh that'd be interesting but he wouldn't go with Miro like he just doesn't want to be especially since Miro is an old man (laughs) yeah yes (laughs) um I do like that. So I'm reading some of this uh, where Miro was like, Darby Allen, you disrespected me. It's okay. I forgive you. I'm a reasonable man. All you have to do is go home and make another one of your gritty student videos. Yes. (laughs) Oh man. Miro is, I love his promos because it's like (coughs) slightly not perfect English. Broke, yeah, the broken English, yeah. Right. Which, like, I listen to him talk on his Twitch stream from time to time, and his English is fine. So I think sometimes he just comes up with the most broken way to say something, because he yes. knows that it's, like, it's hilarious, but it's also, like, super intense. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah Miro is a lot better in AEW. Yeah, I, I mean, it took some time. Well, considering, considering where he was in WWE, though. So. Yeah. No, I mean, he... I, I still just, I do not understand that whole angle with Bobby Lashley and Lana and him. Like, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know whose brain came out of the (laughs) TL. Well, I understand, like, the, oh, someone cheated on somebody or whatever. But, like, none of that really, no one came out of that whole mess better. Because they immediately had... So once Lana was was with Bobby Lashley, she ended up costing him matches, and then he got rid of her. So he looks yeah. dumb. Miro looks dumb. Lana looks dumb. Well, <laughs> anytime, anytime you do that storyline in wrestling, it, it's, it doesn't do anything for anybody. Uh, I mean, it's just because I remember they did it with DDP and his wife. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They did it... Uh, I, I'm pretty sure. They, well, uh, Triple H and Stephanie they did it with them. It's just well, that made dumb. that one. I would say was be, like that. That killed Test. Like Test was done after that because he didn't even win the revenge match. I don't think. Um, sure. But like with that, at least like her and Triple H became like the like the McMahon Helmsley era came out of that whole thing. <laughs> Yeah. So that definitely that was a version where somebody got something out of it. But yeah, generally and I think like with WWE they didn't have any intent at that time to like really push somebody out of that. Yeah. And then they just kinda like, Oh, it's not working, so it just fizzled out. But it fizzled out in like WWE style where they just (laughs) it just goes away. It's like wow, you hurt everybody. Now, I do get with then, WWE, there was, like, the one angle. Well, they did it a couple times because they did the Miro, Lana, and Dolph Ziggler thing. And during yeah. that, they announced that they were getting married. Uh, yeah. Rusev and Lana, that is. So, I assume there was some hard feelings there. And Lana yeah. had been outspoken about stuff. So, there is definitely the WWE punishes you on screen. Well, it's sad. It sounds like uh, Shawn Michaels did it to Bret Hart in real life with St- with Sonny. Uh, so he actually caused real heartache in their marriage. So I mean, right. it, it just I don't know. It just yeah. There's uh, this yeah. storyline to me is garbage. <laughs> when you know someone in as a character, like when you know it's like oh, you know, Rusev and Lana were together. Yeah, does it really work? so good for the story because it's like well I know for sure this isn't real <laughs> sure well did was there rumors that Kevin Sullivan uh, made uh, Benoit and uh, and woman like be with each other all the time because he wanted to like make it look like a storyline and actually it ended worked up in real life. <laughs> right. worked in real life because they got up yeah well yeah and that was because that was the dark ages of wrestling where it was like well, we gotta. If you're in a cast, you better be in a cast all the time. Yes. Uh, 
or like people pretending they were hurt and like legitimately getting taken out on stretchers to an emergency room. Yes. And they're like, yes. uh, you're fine. I don't understand. <laughs> just go with it. Go with it. Yeah, they're like, I just need you to lie as a doctor. Oh, all right. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, let me see. But yeah, so what is this? So next Friday. I didn't even know about this, so I guess Dynamite will be on Friday next week. Because yeah. whatever is on Wednesday to interrupt it, we're going to get... Probably basketball, because basketball never ends. It seems like it's like a all-year sport. I, you know? I, man, I wish I liked basketball. I just can't get into it. Um, all right, so we're getting Miro against Dante Martin. I believe that's the guy from Top Flight. Uh, okay. so that'll be interesting. I assume Mira will obliterate him. <laughs> what if he does? I'm just looking at <laughs> matches I also <laughs> don't know that I ever thought I'd see. Joey Janela against Hangman Adam Page. Yeah. All right. They're doing a weigh-in with Cody and a go-go. Um, Jade Cargill is going to beat somebody. Uh, Evil Uno and Stu against Scorpion Sky and Ethan Page. That should be probably pretty good. Um, remember when uh, EW first started and Joey Janela, they, they were trying to really push him. Who? And I guess he, uh, Joey Janela. Yeah. When AEW yeah. first started, it seemed like they were really trying to push him, and I guess people just didn't take to him. <laughs> and Joey Janela just kind of just fell off and just kind of disappeared. Well, I know he does, like, his own thing as well for events and stuff, but, I mean, because oh. he had, like, because they gave him the, the Lights Out match with Moxley. Sure. Um the first big dark match on AEW Dark was him and Omega. And, I mean, he's had some good matches. but The only thing I remember that he's actually done mm-hmm. that was somewhat good is that uh, Christmas episode with him and Spears and Jesus out there in the audience. <laughs> you remember that? Yes. <laughs> so that's the, only, that's the only match I remember that's actually stuck out to me. <laughs> yeah, the, to to he's done a few good things, but yeah, something happened. I don't know what. Yeah. Um. I mean, he's. Uh, I hate to go to the cornet route on that one, but he definitely looks in worse shape than he did six months ago. <laughs> well, you know, all that partying and drinking. I guess, I guess so, because like, there is. He is a super average sized dude is what it looks like. Now standing next to him, he may be like way bigger than me, but he doesn't even look like he's in shape enough to be a threat to somebody. Yeah. Um, so I just can't. And I mean, he's not (laughs) been presented that way either. Yeah. Like in recent times. So I don't know if he was just like, ah, I'll just do kind of whatever. Or like, I don't know what's going on. Because he's definitely okay. better than he's been portrayed. Well, it sounds like he's friends with Tony Khan in real life. Because I think they hang out with each other all the time. So, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, I'm assuming he probably, because he's organized shows and stuff. So, I mean, he probably has like a backstage role as well. Maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe he's just slowly transitioning to a backstage role. Who knows? Right. Well, I mean, he's he's put his body through a lot. So, um, yeah. yeah. But... There, I mean, there's also the chance that there'll be a resurgence for him or something. But, yeah, for me, he just doesn't – like, I know he's capable of more, but it just doesn't look like he's – he's either – maybe he was hurt. You know, it's hard to say. Maybe he was hurt, um, and that's just been going with it. But, yeah, he just doesn't – doesn't. That's <laughs> really what it is. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's not. Yeah. Uh, what else they got? Darby Allen against the Caesar Bonani. Uh, that guy is starting to grow on me. Okay. Um, I, this is going to sound ridiculous. I really like the group with him and pretty Peter and JD and Ryan Nemeth. Yeah. Cause it's absolutely just completely ridiculous, but they play <laughs> yeah. it like where they had JD Drake with like the weird see-through shirt, but he's playing it completely straight. Yeah. Like, He's like, I mean, they all have to know how insane the whole thing is. 
where he's like, oh, I'm going to make this look good. You guys are going to wish you could make it look like this. And they're like, oh, that is awesome. It's like, <laughs> be like this yeah. is so over the top, but it's fantastic. So, Well, pretty, uh, pretty Peter uh, <laughs> is a much better character than that stupid librarian gimmick they were trying to get off. Yeah. So. Well, I love on, have you seen on Dark where they pull him out on the, the heart bed sled thing? <laughs> I feel like that's one of those things that like there's a real good chance that I would hate the whole group but there's the equal like but I've fallen on the side of I I just love it because it's so out there it's funny how some things were like yeah okay that's okay but then like you see like zombies you're like yeah this is dumb so it's like it's it's a fine line you walk in I was like (laughs) I think from like working different places and being around people like like people that are just like almost a character of a real person like those exist in real life like well we you we work with a guy who stuffed packaging foam down his pants and burned his uh, (laughs) burned his inner thighs because he didn't realize that the packaging foam was hot (laughs) yeah so yeah if no one's ever worked around it there is like if you ever get like you order something and it gets foam that's like almost perfectly formed to whatever the item is. Yeah. It's basically a bag and there's like a liquid that goes in it. And then once the yeah. liquids are mixed, there's a chemical reaction and it turns it into the foam. Uh, yeah. but there's a decent amount of heat that goes with that reaction. So basically yeah. the guy took one of those things and put it in his pants and that's what happened. Um, well, well, that guy like, was what? that guy was complete nuts he broke uh right i'm thinking of the right guy yeah like because he'd play hockey like yeah yeah you're thinking of joe yeah yeah so there was a time so they had a bus stop basically for the smoke hut where we worked and uh like the super thick glass well this guy would constantly run and jump onto things and scream kobe well yes he did this and lost his balance and went, I guess, because he had a wedding band on. So when yeah. his hand hit the glass to catch himself, his ring, I guess because it was thick enough, hit first. And because yeah. all that force was in like that one small space, he shattered that entire yep. glass. Yep. It was just left standing there. Um, I believe he had Kobe'd something else and broke it earlier in the day. Um, well, well, like I said, when he did the packaging thing, I, I don't know if you were there when he did it. He got the whole bag and just started pulling it all out and stuffing it down his pants. And he's like, hey, Saul, Saul, watch this. I was like, this is not going to end well, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he did it. And yeah, I mean, because it was stuck down his pants, he couldn't get it out. And so it was like burning him pretty bad, I assume. And it, you know, like you said, that, that foam expands. So you pretty much trapped your leg into your blue jeans with this hot foam. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the this is a story he told me. <laughs> we're going, we're just burying this poor dude. But he was like, he was a nice guy. Like he was a hard worker. Like, despite him Kobe and destroying stuff left and right, yeah. he was probably one of the hardest workers in that warehouse. Um, sure. To be fair. Because yeah. when he was gone, it was noticeable. Um, yeah. He had told me one day, uh, because men in a warehouse, this kind of thing happens, uh, people were passing gas and then yeah. try to do it, make the other person smell it. Uh, it's childish, but <laughs> yeah. I'm never not going to not laugh at that situation yeah. when I see it play out with people because it is kind of funny, even though it's completely right. immature. Um, he was telling us one day, he was like, yeah, I was trying to get one of the other guys. And he was like, but I tried a little bit too hard and I kind of pooped my pants at work. And he was like, so I lost <laughs> yes. a pair of boxer shorts that day. And I was uh, just looking yeah. at him and I was like, Kobe? And he was like, no, this was before Kobe. Although that would have been awesome <laughs> if I would have yelled that when I did it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like it was like you are an actual maniac. Yeah, and so and, and this is the way to wrap up the, the podcast today because <laughs> the the, uh, the the whole varsity blondes young bucks ended the way I thought it was going to be. The young bucks won, but 
with them um, getting their shoes stolen. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, going back to that, going back to that guy, I remember uh, one time Benjamin was telling us like, hey, uh, the big guy, uh, the boss is going to walk through here with a bunch of clients. So we need to all be on, you know, <laughs> best behavior. Stupid. Yeah. And that day, for whatever reason, he decides to get bull wrap and make a <laughs> hockey outfit out of it. And he's like out in the middle of the, of the hallway with, with this homemade hockey puck thing well, that he made. Basically, he, goalie gear is what he had made. Goalie, yes. And he's out there like grunting and doing everything else. And right when he was doing it, uh, the boss comes down with all these high high wig uh, executives and everything, and uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah, but great. again, despite all that, that guy was literally one of the best workers. Like, oh yeah, he had yeah. time. Like, he could get the job done and still do that stupid stuff. <laughs> but yeah, he was like the the super extreme of everything. Yeah. So yeah, when I see people yeah. like uh, Pretty Peter's group where they're just like over the top, stuff yeah. like that makes it where it's like, no, there's real people like that, and they oh, gravitate no, no, towards no, no. each other. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because where we work, there's a bunch of idiots that all that guy like he was he's the he was the leader. I'm like, wow, if he's your leader. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, yeah, I'd say that's probably a good place to stop then. Um, sure. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think we can we can we can top that. I wish I had like <laughs> someone screaming Kobe as a uh, sound effect. I would I would finish oh, us out with that. He, oh, he did that a lot. He did yeah. that a lot. Well, after he broke the bus stop smoke hut glass, uh, he retired it. Well, shortly after that, uh, I think he he. Yeah, I think he got fired, actually. Yeah. And the funny thing is, the reason he got fired was because he, he uh, called off too many times. Well, I think he, he did. Well, it was, he was he late. Fired. <laughs> it was what it was. Like, it was one of those things where, obviously, uh, despite how much work he got done, I yeah. don't think the people in charge really liked him. And he was a bit of a liability. I mean, truth be told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he was late yeah. like multiple times in a row, and then they're like, "If you're late again, you're going to get fired." And he was like, five minutes late or something, and then they got rid of him. Um, yes, and it's one of those things. But it's, once they got rid of him, it was like everyone else realized, "Oh man, he did like eighty percent of all the work." Crap. It's funny because uh, I think that was like kind of the downfall of that place that we worked at. Because when he left, it, it was kind of like uh, like pop, pu- putting a little hole in a balloon. The air slowly started, and everyone started leaving. And then that I, shortly, I left shortly after that. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, you left, I left. I mean, our leaving was unrelated to him leaving. Like it, I mean, oh no, he other was, than no, he, he, he was he was my leader, Ross. He yeah. was my <laughs> like if he's out of here, I'm out of here. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I had noticed though it was like trying to get stuff shipped out just it took longer than it should have, which caused problems. Um, it would be funny to be able to have like an over overhead view kind of thing to see if that one little thing could affect it. Who knows? Maybe one day you'll work in somewhere and he'll, he'll be our, our manager. <laughs> Kobe! Be! Like, Oh my goodness. He was like, I need you to scream that at least three or four times a day and break yes. something. Because. All right. <laughs> So, all right, everybody, uh, this episode has been all over the place. So yes. we hope you enjoyed learning about a guy possibly named Joe, who was a maniac. <laughs> Wait, well, well I, I, like you said, it, uh, the, to justify the Pe- the pretty Peter group, uh, there are weirdos like that in real life. So, yeah. Yes, to where it's like, that's why I can believe that that group is actually like that. Like, it doesn't just break my Perfect. brain. I do not know sure. any real life zombies, so uh, no. I mean, <laughs> no. theoretically, I have had neighbors that were super drug addicts that were kind of <laughs> like zombies. I've um, seen, meth but they never tried to eat uh, me. Now yeah. the bath salts people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's a story for a different time. Um, yes. So, all right, everybody, we'll be back uh, before too long. 
So take it easy. I'm going to hit a button. Hit it. Hit good. Thank you.